Hello, everyone. We are back with another TFCU Banking Made Easy podcast. I am your host, Lily. And I'm Sai. And today we're going to be talking about home lending. Yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody for watching the podcast, listening. We definitely noticed we have you know a lot of support and we appreciate it. And uh, this month's episode, we're going to be talking about home lending. Yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. We definitely appreciate it. And I know the subject of home lending is definitely something that's interesting to me. I'm not currently a home buyer yet, but it's something that I do want to know about. And I think it's important. A lot of people want to know about it. You know, if you want to ever stop renting and actually, you know, get your own home, mm-hmm. I think it's a big step for a lot of people. Oh, I definitely think so, especially with those rent prices hiking up nowadays. So it's definitely good. But speaking on the topic of home lending and, you know, you know, first time home buyers, I do have a trivia question for you if you're ready for it. I'm always ready. My favorite. Here we go. <laughs> Let's see if I can actually get this one right. <laughs> I think you'll get it. I don't know. I have. To Is it an it. easy one? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. We'll see. All right. So, Sai, my question for you today is, how many homes were sold in the U.S. in 2023? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Simple, right? Uh, the enti- so, the entire, in the co- you said U.S. in yep, the whole country? The entire U.S. If you had to guess. Let's do a third. I'm gonna I'm gonna say ten million homes. Ten million homes. You're shooting high there, huh? Because <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say thirty million. I was like, that's way too much. <laughs> so that that's a lot. Um, all right. So no, actually, according to the National Association of Realtors, there were four point oh nine million existing homes sold in the US, which was actually the lowest um over the past thirty years prior. I wonder why it was so low. Well, I mean, we are in luck today. We have mm-hmm. Natalia Pazeski present, and she is one of our mortgage loan originators at Taunton Federal Credit Union. Uh, Natalia, thank you so much for joining us today. We're very lucky to have you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you. We appreciate it. So if someone were looking to purchase a home for the first time, how would you direct them to take like the first steps? Where should they start? What are some of the things you think that they should do? Um, so there is whole boatload of things that they can do. Uh, we want to make sure your credit looks good. We want to make sure that you're saving. We want to make sure um, your credit is right there where it needs to be. Uh, credit score, your liabilities, all that stuff. Um, there's also different options that you can look into um, a housing assistance where you can take courses, first time home buyers courses, which is really important. And it pretty much shows you step by step what it entails to become a homeowner. It's pretty cool. The courses, are the, is that something you have to pay for or is it? Uh, there are some institutions that will do free, but a lot of the times they are, you do have to pay for a first time homebuyer's course and you get the certificate. Gotcha. That's definitely something that's worth it. It's probably the biggest purchase of most people's lives. Absolutely. Buying a home. Yeah. And you want to make sure that you're ready for that purchase as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely good to have financial stability. Absolutely. It's something I would be interested in because, like I mentioned earlier, I don't own a home. Mm -hmm. And it's something I think it's really good to learn about. Yep. Because we spend so much time learning about, you know, we we learn about so many things in life. But it it could be easy to think, oh, you're just buying this and I'm going to let the the real estate person that's working with me just Mm -hmm. do all the work. But I think it's important to understand it yourself. Absolutely. You want to know what you're getting yourself into and not just be blindsided either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not sure if, you know. This is something that you can answer, but what would you say the difference is between, let's say, yourself as a mortgage loan originator yeah. and a realtor? Like, what? how are your roles? That's a good question. So, uh, good it's question. different, different rules. Um, now, we definitely love to work together. Uh, it's great to have a good relationship from with a lo- uh, loan officer and your realtor. You definitely need to have a connection there uh, because a lot of the times I'm communicating with that realtor as well. So, if there's items that a borrower can't get me, I'm going to the realtor to get that information. Uh, so what I do is I help with the financing portion of it and they help with the shopping portion of it. So they're going to guide you in looking at these different houses uh, once you do get your pre-qualification uh, to let you know what you're qualified for and what you can spend on a home. Okay. Okay. Well, that's awesome. So it sounds like it's really much more of a team effort. Absolutely is. Yes. Yeah. And there's more that is involved. You know, we have closing attorneys. We have appraisers coming out also. Uh, some borrowers are interested in it's it's a good thing to have uh, inspections on your home, which they're not um, required by a lender, but it's all always a good option to 
get an inspection done on a home that you're looking to purchase. So that way, you know what's going on with that house. Is an inspection different than an appraisal? It is. So the appraisal is, uh, the appraiser goes out there and uh, does an appraisal on the property to see what the value is. Yeah. And an inspection is, they go in there and they inspect it. They look for cracks. They look for any kind of defects in the property. Mm. So an appraisal will not tell you that. An inspection will tell you that. Exactly, like what's wrong. Right. Where, you yeah. know, you might not want to hear it. Right, you might not want to hear it. It could be yeah. cracks in the foundation. It could be bad plumbing, bad electric. So it's always worth it, um, in my opinion, to look look in the inspections. Get an inspection done on the property. A thousand percent. I mean, you, you're investing a lot of funds yep. and time into that property. You want to make sure it's a good investment. Absolutely. So do you think that if someone was interested to, you know, get a mortgage and work with you, where should they call you, go online? What is, what is the best thing? Quickest way is to contact me directly um, to help expedite the process. An application could go right in online, so that way everything's done. Uh, I pick up that application, I go through it, and then we have our consultation. A lot of the times I'm doing consultations prior to an application, so that way I can see what this member has or what this member doesn't have. And having that conversation before an actual application goes in is really what needs to be done. Um, because I can speak with somebody and they have no credit at all, and that's going to be a different type of situation. Yeah, and then you can kind of like set realistic uh, like expectations Absolutely. of what they can look for and yep. that type of thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's definitely a great idea. Absolutely. Now, Natalia, would you say it's probably smarter to reach out to a mortgage loan origination originator? over reaching out to a realtor? I think that that is one of the first steps is to see what you qualify for because you can't run to a realtor saying I want to buy a house at 500000 and they don't qualify for that. So definitely um, a borrower on their own should be looking at their own credit first. Um, they should be making sure everything is, looks good on there. Uh, employment is really important as well. Obviously, your down payment, um, but having that conversation with a loan originator is the first step. Okay, that's definitely a good basis and some good information to have for anybody who's out there, you know, trying to get into the world of home lending and kind of seeing what they can shop around for. So, Natalia, would you be able to maybe go over the different types of financing that's available for first-time home buyers? Uh, so, there's many different programs that are out there for our first-time home buyers. Uh, we can put them into conventional, FHA, USDA, VA loans. It really depends on what they qualify for. What kind of advantages, if any, do you get being a first-time home buyer versus someone that's buying multiple mortgages? Uh, buying multiple homes. Oh, yeah, home. for financing. Um, so that depends on the different criteria for different scenarios. Uh, a lot of the times it is the down payment amount is a little bit more favorable for the borrower. On the first? On the first time home buyers, yeah. But, like but again, it all depends on the situation. Yeah. I gotcha. Yep. Okay, okay. When you say that you look for good credit, right? Yeah. Do you have a minimum like length of credit history that you look for before someone would pursue uh, getting a mortgage? Um, so we do, but again, case by case basis, but normally guidelines are about two years of credit history. And they want to see between two and three lines of credit as well. So you can't just have one credit personal loan on your credit and be fine with that. Uh, so it is important to have credit and also make, make sure that that credit is at good standings. We want to make sure that limits are low also. So that way that helps you with purchasing and, your, and the money that needs to go in for what your payments are going to be. Okay, that's it. That's very insightful, Natalia. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We also wanted to discuss uh, another mortgage product that we offer and Natalia can help you with. And it was uh, home equity okay. versus uh, a HELOC. It, you you take the floor and explain okay. to me because I'll be honest, I don't know too much about so, it. So equity, equity loans, equity lines. Uh, sometimes you'll hear it as a HE loan. Sometimes you'll hear it as a HELOC. But what is it? Uh, so home equity line of credit. It is an open-ended line of credit. So the funds that you use are the funds that you pay back. You have a credit limit in place, whereas a home equity loan is a one lump sum of funds that you would get. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so normally um, your home equity loan, the interest rate's fixed, the payment is fixed, the loan amount is just what it is. And you start paying that back on a monthly basis. With a home equity line of credit, 
is like a line of credit, so you can access it when you need it. Absolutely, yes. Where yeah. the the home equity loan is the home equity loan yeah. is just a flat amount, and you're taking that yes. amount. Like, just like that's what it what says, it is a loan. Yes, it's a collateral loan against your home. Yep, and we determine uh, the amounts, whether it's a loan or a line, uh, how much equity you have in the home. What are the, some of the things you've seen people come to you to get those types of loans? What do they use it for typically? Um, so yeah, it, your home equities, you can use it for different options. You know, it really depends on what you need it for. Home improvements, medical bills, tuition. That would make like sense. That. Yeah. yeah. Someone fixing their house yep. that yeah. you would take it up against the house. Absolutely. That makes yeah. sense. And with the home equity line of credit, it's a credit limit. So I have some borrowers that have it just in case of an emergency where they don't have to use it, but it's there in place. Very nice. So, so I mean, it, basically it's not quite the same, but the line of credit act is acting as a credit card, basically, without us having a card. Because it's revolving, because you have a limit to it, correct? Yep. And those rates can be, it, it could be a fixed or it could be a variable. It depends on what your lender offers. And that's on both sides, whether it's a home equity loan. Normally those are for your fixed rate programs and your home equity line, your HELOCs are variable rate. And when it's a just me like listening, I'm saying I'm assuming fix stays the same. Correct. Yep. For the life of the term. And variable. What is the variable? <laughs> what is it? So variable means it's going to adjust, and it depends on what kind of program you are is how it adjusts. Oh, so it's yes, different. It's not it just is. a set thing. It okay. Is. All right. And obviously, the benefits of each one are going to change depending on the situation. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. When would you direct someone to a home equity loan versus, or maybe not even direct, but when would someone want a HELOC versus a home equity loan? Like, what is the like deciding factor? Because they seem to be like very similar to me. They are a little similar um, where they're home equity. So you're obtaining the equity, but uh, the repayment and the rate and if it's variable, so, you know, some people don't like that variable rate. They'd rather have something that's completely fixed. So they know what they're paying and they know how much time it's going to take them to pay it off. Uh, where some people are a little bit more riskier and they're fine with variable rate mortgages. Gotcha. So it's a, the home equity loan is the one that would be like static. The fixed rate, yes. The fixed rate, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we just wanted to, to thank everybody. And before we end today's podcast, I just wanted to do a community shout out. And I wanted to thank Julie Rose for the super nice thing she said about Natalia. And it was a review on Google. And she says, Natalia goes above and beyond. She pays attention to every detail that you share with her. She is kind, caring, and listens to every concern you have. I am speechless and can't say enough fantastic things about Natalia. Thank you, Julie, we appreciate it. Thank you, Julie. That was really nice. That was really sweet. So. Yeah. So, yeah, Natalia, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. you. Know, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. It was fun. It was great. Learned a lot. You'll be on your way to buying a home, Sai. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just give me, give me a couple years. That's it. You, you got to save, save, save. That's right. Time. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. We look forward to seeing you next time. Yeah, thank you. If you've enjoyed this month's podcast, Banking Made Easy with TFCU, please do us a huge favor and subscribe today.